Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another interesting session by Intellipath on JWT tokens which are commonly employed for authorization purposes of web applications. But before we begin with this session, a subscribe to the Intellipath YouTube channel would be much appreciated. First of all, let's look into the agenda for this session. We will begin this session by understanding what is JWT. Then we'll understand why authorization is required in web application. After that, we'll understand the details of the session token authorization approach. Next, we'll understand how JWT solves the problem of session tokens and finally, we'll learn about the structure of JWT and how JWT works. I hope I have made myself clear with the agenda. So, without any ado, let's understand what we mean by JWT tokens. JWT stands as an acronym for JSON Web Tokens. Actually, according to the Java development community, it was referred to as JWT in the beginning, meaning JSON Authorization Web Tokens. But it's commonly referred to as JWT everywhere now. So for this session, we'll be referring to it as JWT. Anyways guys, what is this JWT? Well, JWT or a JSON Web Token is an open standard that defines a self-contained and compact way for securing the information transmission between different parties as a JSON object. In simple terms, JWT creates a standard way for two parties to communicate securely. Nowadays, it is commonly employed in the microservice sector where multiple servers work in a sync. The RFC 7519 is the open industry standard specification that outlines how JWT should be structured and how to use it for authorization purposes. Before diving into the details of JWT, let's first understand why authorization is required and what it is. The basic reason behind the incarnation of web token is HTTP stateless protocol. If you remember the HTTP protocol, it allows the interaction between the server and user when all the information needed for interaction is contained at each step. No prior state is remembered in this case, right? For example, consider a server and client and this client wants to access some page from the server. Then in order to do that, the client needs to send some information. If she wants to access the simple HTML page, all she needs to do is share the URL of that particular page and then the server will send back that page to the client. Similarly, if a client want to access another page, she will again have to share the URL of that page and only then the server will revert back with page access. Technically speaking, in this case, the server is not remembering any previous request, right? Each request is self-contained which works perfectly in the server application that is static and available to everyone. But the problem comes when the server is dynamic which relies on user ID for authorization. In this case, the information sent to the server is not just about what page you want. You obviously also need to tell the server who you are. For example, consider that you are a client and you want to access page P1 from the server. To do that, you'll actually have to provide your client ID and password alongside the item you need access. Once the ID password authentication is done, the server will share the page P1 with you. But what if you need access to page P2 now? Only providing the page name for access won't work again. You'll have to authenticate your ID and password again to access your page P2. Authenticating for each access is not quite effective for the client, right? And this is what leads to the concept of authorization. You won't find yourself in this sort of situations these days. You can access multiple pages on bank websites without multiple logins, right? All of this is because of web applications these days use token system to resolve this authentication overload. There are two authorization methods that are commonly employed. The first one is session token and another one is JSON web token. Let's first understand how a session token works quickly. Again, consider the client and server setup. Now, if a client want to access the page from the server, first he'll have to authenticate his ID and password, right? Once that is done, the server will create a session. Consider this session as an activity log where all of your access records are authorized. When you are authenticated by checking your client ID and password, the server will automatically create a session ID. This session ID is usually maintained as a cookie and now instead of ID and password, the client will just communicate the session ID, right? 
the server will look that session id up and sort of identify who the client is and will provide the access to the said file the server typically has to cater to multiple clients at the same time right so this notion of clients passing session ids really help the server always knows who the client is and can look up the information based on single token now if you are wondering about how the client passes this session id then it is completely dependent on how the session token is implemented the common way of doing this is to save the session id in a cookie so that it can be automatically added to the cookie header on every subsequent request to sort of sum it up we authenticate the client then the server saves the state and returns the response for a cookie subsequent respect which will be initiated automatically by the browser the server can look up the information and provide next accesses this approach of saving session ids as cookies has been working for a long time and still it is the most popular way of authorization however there are few problems in this approach which led to incarnation of jwt tokens the biggest problem with session token is that it makes an assumption it assumes that there is only one monolithic server for a web application which used to work all right in the past but now in this modern era there are multiple servers running the singular web application the structure of modern web application looks something like this right there are multiple servers managing the load of singular web app there is load balancer which takes in the request and decides which server will respond to it now consider that if you make the request and load balancer assigns it to the server 1 the server 1 will save the state and create the session token as well later it will also revert back to you with the access to the page but now if you make the request and the server assigns it to the server 2 then server 2 won't be able to cater you because there is no previous state maintained inside server 2 it doesn't know the session id you have provided right now a solution to this problem can be creating a shared cache across all the servers where they could store the session record or ids and look them up but again if this singular shared cache instance goes down the server won't be able to do any task so this solution is a failure too Now suppose if the administrator stores the session ID inside the server 1 and when you make any request only the server 1 will cater to you but imagine if there is huge load on server 1 then the multi server implementation becomes of no use right so let us try to discover the better solution that json web token brings to the table we will try to understand this with a real life scenario to get a better hold of this concept now imagine a customer and service desk operator the customer brings some sort of complaint to the service desk operator the service desk representative understands the problem and tells the customer to come back tomorrow so that they can further investigate that particular issue but again she doesn't want the customer to repeat her whole story to some other representative once she comes back tomorrow so what this representative does is she writes everything down on the paper and gives that paper to the customer saying bring this back tomorrow but now there is possibility that this customer will update the contents of that paper to claim something which is not feasible in her case consider it as some sort of fraud now to refrain that from happening the representative adds a unique signature just below the contents now when the customer comes back tomorrow any available representative will be able to understand the problem and cater the customer right there is no need to remember any token id just the customer will have to bring that paper for every consecutive transaction which contains the complete information and signature and any representative will be able to authenticate customer's query by looking into the signature and cater to her needs right this exact model is the intuition behind jwt tokens now imagine the customer getting authenticated once the authentication is done instead of storing the access token on the server what if the server returns complete information with the customer as a token imagine this as a json payload being returned with a customer information back every time the client makes the subsequent service request now the client will share the whole json token while making the request and server will authorize if he is the valid customer or not by validating the unique signature moving ahead we'll understand the structure of this jwt token The JWT token consists of three different parts. The first part is header. The header contains information about the token type which will be JWT and the algorithm that is used for encoding and signing the token. 
दीज अलगोरिदम्स कैन बी शार टू फिफ्टी सिक्स एच एस टू फिफ्टी सिक्स आर एस ए आर एस टू फिफ्टी सिक्स एंड एच मैक देन वी हैव अ पे लोड द पे लोड कंटेन्स इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट सेशन डेटा इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्लेम्स हियर आर द फॉर्म ऑफ क्लेम्स दैट वी कैन प्रोवाइड वी हैव इश्यू सब्जेक्ट ऑडियंस इनिशिएटेड एट एक्सेट्रा वी कैन ऑल्सो पुट दिस क्लेम्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्लेम सेट्स बट जस्ट मेक श्योर दैट यू डोंट एड द सेंसिटिव इन्फॉर्मेशन हियर कॉज जे डब्ल्यू टीज आर इजी टू डिकोड देन कम्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ दिस टोकन द सिग्नेचर सिग्नेचर इज कैलकुलेटेड बाई एनकोडिंग द हेडर एंड पे लोड यूजिंग बेस सिक्सटी फोर यू आर एल एनकोडिंग एंड कॉन्कैटिनेटिंग दम विथ अ पीरियड सेपरेटर विच इज देन गिवन टू द क्रिप्टोग्राफिक अलगोरिदम सो वेन द हेडर ऑफ पे लोड चेंजेस द सिग्नेचर हैज टू बी कैलकुलेटेड अगेन only the identity provider idp knows the private key to calculate the signature which completely prevents the tampering of the token now let's understand how jwt token works when a user successfully signs in with their credentials a json web token will be returned this return token will act as a credential from now onwards that is why extreme caution should be exercised to avoid security risk with these tokens now for subsequent access after authentication the user agent should share the jwt token this is actually done by the browser itself by using cookie header and bearer schema the server's protected routes will verify the authorization header for a valid jwt and if one is found the user will be granted access to protected resources note that if you send jwt tokens through http headers you should try to prevent them from getting too big some servers don't accept more than 8 kb in headers if you are trying to embed too much information in a jwt token like by including all the users permission you may need an alternative solution like authorization 0 fine grained authorization i hope this demonstration is clear to all of you let's discover a few advantages of using jwt tokens as json is less verbose than xml when it is encoded its size also remains smaller making jwt more compact than other tokenization methods security wise simple web token can only be symmetrically signed by a shared secret using the hmac algorithm however jwt tokens can use public private key pair in the form of x.509 certificate for signing which is yet another crucial benefit of jwt The next benefit on our list conveys that JSON parsers are common in most programming languages because they map directly to the objects whereas XML doesn't have a natural document to object mapping. This benefit makes authorization easier to work with JWT than simple web tokens assertions. If we talk about the usage JWT is used as an internet scale. This highlights the ease of client side processing of the JSON web token on multiple platforms especially mobiles. I hope these benefits of JWT tokens are clear to all of you guys out there. That's all we have for this session. I hope that this session was informative and helpful. Thank you so much for watching this video and do subscribe to IntelliPath YouTube channel for more such technical videos. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPath provides full stack web development course. in collaboration with ENICT IIT Guwahati the course link of which is given in the description below